Blog Talk Radio. Across the country and around the world, streaming live on the internet, it's Real Estate Coaching Radio, bringing you the latest news, interviews, and secrets of the top producers. Hosted by award-winning real estate coaches, Tim and Julie Harris. Well, hello and welcome to the show today. I'm Tim Ventura. I'll be filling in for Tim and Julie Harris. We're doing kind of a casual Friday thing. We're covering agent tech secrets, and we're going to be talking about the cloud. So let me start out by telling you a little bit about myself. My name, again, is Tim Ventura. I work with Tim and Julie Harris. I do a lot of the technology stuff for them, kind of a jack of all trades, I guess. Uh, I've been in the technology industry for over 20 years. I used to live in Redmond, and I still live in the Seattle area where it is currently overcast and rainy, which, if you know anything about Seattle, is pretty normal for us. Uh, Now, this is a live show, and our call-in number here is 347 857-1195. So if you have any questions, give me a call there or just, you know, send me an email. Questions at realestatecoachingradio.com. Again, that's 347-857-1195. Or send me an email. Questions at realestatecoachingradio.com. Also, if you want to schedule a free coaching call, I am on the roster, hiding at the very bottom of the page, at freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Okay, so let's start out. And again, we're trying to keep things casual and mellow. The buzzword these days is the cloud. Everything is going to the cloud, and you should be there too. I'm sure you're reading that everywhere. If you read any tech news at all, everything is cloud these days. And so from a real estate agent's perspective, what is the cloud? Why does it matter? Why do you care? I guess that's the big question. Um, You know, so let me let me start out by giving you kind of a breakdown of what it is uh, in real life, and then I'll take you through really why it matters and why it can affect your business. Okay, so again, if you follow technology every every uh, year or so, it seems like there's a new buzzword out there. Uh, the last one before the cloud that really caught my eye was software as a service. Uh, before that, it was web services, hosted solutions. These are all just kind of lingo, and they, they kind of stand for the same thing. So what the cloud is, is it means taking applications that are on your desktop, stuff like eh, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, uh, maybe like an MLS app. Back in the day, people might have had something like that. Moving that to the web so that instead of having to have that software on your PC, you can instead just go to your favorite cloud website and use it. And there are also some new benefits of this as well. There are some new hybrid apps. Uh, One of the advantages of the cloud is there's kind of an increasing assumption by software developers that, hey, you know, people are on their PCs, they're on their tablets, they're on their mobile devices. These things are always connected. So how come we don't, you know, how, how, why don't we have like a desktop application that's also always connected? So in terms of the, in terms of the cloud, I guess the, the big thing there, and please apologize to, for, the, for the dogs that are hanging out with me today listening to the show. Uh, so in terms of the cloud, I think that the big, the big thing about it is, you have applications that are on the web, that are on your desktop, they're always connected. They're also tied into all your social networking stuff. So that's that's kind of the big feature. So the cloud is becoming more important because everything is going to it. That is, the, again, all over the news. Um, and this isn't a new trend. This is something that we've been seeing for a long time. It used to be, like in the 90s, if you were working on computer systems then, Everything was on your desktop. You'd have a custom app for this, custom app for that. You have to load it up, connect it, make sure all the systems work together, all that fun stuff. Well, that's going away. Everything is going online, and that makes life a lot easier. Um, You know, so I I guess another aspect of it, and and this is very cloud-specific, is uh, the cloud is hardware agnostic. I put that down there in my notes, and we'll get these notes online for you as well. Hardware agnostic means that 
Uh, again, since it's web-based, it really doesn't care what kind of a system you're running. You know, you could be on a Mac, you could be on Windows, you could be on a tablet, on your mobile phone, on a Linux machine. It doesn't matter. As long as you have a web browser that supports kind of the, the standard web browser stuff, right, W3C compliant, you can access it. And, and that, that's a big benefit. But hardware agnostic also means something else. Now, let me tell you a little story. I lived in Phoenix for a year, and I got to visit the Phoenix NAP. It's spelled, uh, well, you know how it's spelled Phoenix, and then it's N-A-P after that. Now, the Phoenix NAP is the largest data center in Phoenix. And it's not owned, it's, it's not used by one company. It's, it's used by hundreds of companies, and they use it for a lot of billing and data processing stuff. We went and we got a tour of the place. So it, it, this is enormous, right? It's like two or three levels, as big as a football field, all that kind of stuff. They took us down and they showed us racks and racks of servers. I mean, it was like something out of the matrix. And they were explaining to us how a lot of these billing systems, as well as people's websites and other stuff, these lived on machines X, Y, or Z, you know, in these big racks. But if the machine had issues, it would automatically transfer everything that was running over to another machine. Now think about that for a sec, what that means for your website. It used to be you have a hosted website, right? Websites have always been hosted somewhere. So maybe that's with GoDaddy or something. Maybe it's on a server sitting in GoDaddy's office or whatever. Well, if that server had problems, your website was down. All of a sudden, people who wanted to get in touch with you couldn't reach you. Well, what the NAP did was they changed that so that it's hardware agnostic. So all of a sudden, if that machine starts having problems, your website stays up. It moves to another machine, which is very, very much like the matrix. All of a sudden, hardware agnostic means it doesn't matter where your applications live. They're not on your PC, but the, one of the big ideas behind the cloud is you don't have to know where they are. You don't have to care. And that's one of the real big benefits of it. So what we're saying is the cloud means your apps are located somewhere else. You don't have to know or care as long as they work as they're supposed to. And, again, from a real estate perspective, you're a small business owner. That is giant because you don't want to have to deal with stuff that's crashing, repair calls, all of this stuff that we all used to have to deal with, right? You just want to be able to sit down at your PC and make sure that it works. Okay, so I think we've covered some of the fundamentals there. So the, the cloud is it's hardware agnostic. It's re remotely hosted. Um, it may be hosted in two or three different places at once. If you're using, like, Amazon services, Microsoft services, there's lots of different stuff there. You may have applications that are spread across five or six different machines, and they all handle, like, a little different piece of it. Uh, you know, more and more that's happening with social networking stuff, where if you're connected, for instance, uh, Windows 8 connects to a lot of your social networks automatically, or your instant messenger might do that. I use Trillion for instant messaging, and it does that as well. You connect it to all of your social networks, and it's connected to the cloud and all of those social networks all at once using lots and lots of different systems, and you don't know where any of them are at. They just work. So that's what makes the cloud so nice. Now, I guess one of the other, one of the other things you might be wondering, and again, this is kind of a big, broad painting the picture for you, is um, why – why would software developers do this, right? Or isn't there big bucks in, you know, in having applications that are on your desktop? Well, yes and no, and somewhere in between. Uh, I guess I'll tell you another story. Once upon a time, uh, in 2009, actually, my partner Nicole Ocean and I started a company called the BPO Automation Group. And for anybody in real estate, you will remember how dark 2009 is, you know, was in, in terms of sales. You know, I mean, it was foreclosures everywhere. Oh, God, it was horrible. And when we started, we, we came up with software that basically filled out BPO forms automatically. You know, and so when we launched the business, uh, we had more business than we could handle back then. It, it just it took off. I mean, it, it was... <laughs> It was really amazing. And so we, we kind of immediately grew from being a little consulting company to being a software company. 
and we ended up becoming the number one software company for BPO software, and then we got into automated order capture as well, right, which is a natural extension. So let's say you're working with a major provider like Aqua or Mark to Market or something like that, and you want more orders because you're getting paid 40 to 50 bucks each. Well, so you use our software to catch them and then use our software to fill them out. So we were, we were serving both ends of that market. Um, all of our software was desktop-based. And again, we started the company in 2009, so this made a lot of sense. You know, everybody was on Windows, or so we thought. And Windows has you know easy to write software, lots of support, all that kind of fun stuff. So you put the software on; it's it's easy. It works just like it's worked for the last 20 years before that. Except what we found was desktop software is getting more difficult to write. There's lots of security issues. You know, every week there's a new security warning about this, that, or the other thing. And what that means is it's getting harder to install software in computers that works correctly, especially if you're custom writing that software, right, for a small audience. Also, the other thing that we found in real estate, and maybe this is a topic for future shows, lots of agents are using Macintosh, lots and lots and lots and lots. Uh, and that was something that we kind of protested at first, but as we learned more about it, we came to understand why. There are some real benefits there. So if we have time, maybe I can touch on that as well today. But So back to our little software company. Why would you write software for the web? Why would you write it for the cloud instead of for the desktop? It's easier to write it so that people can reach it with different platforms. Again, Windows, Mac, tablets, mobile devices, and you've got all sorts of tablets and mobile devices. And it is a million times easier to support it. One of the big challenges that we found was the minute you come out with version 2 of your software, you have to support both versions. And you always want to have version 2 because you always have new features that just don't fit in that first one. You know, And so depending on how fast the industry is moving, maybe you have three versions in one year. We did that. We had three versions in one year. And we found that the support load was insane because now all of a sudden you have three different solutions for every problem. If somebody is having trouble installing it, well, which version are you using? It just becomes a nightmare. So the cloud takes that away. You only have one way to deal with things, and that's on the web. And if you're, if you're really feeling gung-ho, and, and again, Microsoft does this, Google is kind of moving in this direction, if you already have desktop apps, you can connect them to the cloud, create cloud versions of them, have hybrid apps. So th th there's, there, there is a middle ground there, I guess. Okay, so let's go over some of the major benefits. These are the big benefits. These are the ones the media talks about, right? These don't necessarily apply to you specifically. These are kind of benefits that, that apply to everybody. Um, you don't need to worry about scalability with the cloud. And what I mean by that is if you have a CRM in your office, you have customers calling in all the time. Hey, let's say you add 10 more agents. Let's say you're building your team, right? You've got admins, you have agents, you have people running around. You don't have to worry about whether or not you have enough machine to handle all that load. And that is something, again, that web apps make possible. And we didn't see that before. It used to be, okay, you put up a Microsoft server for your local area network. It's sitting in the back room. Everybody gets their email on that server. And before you know it, you've got two servers, three servers. And before you know it, you've got a dedicated full-time tech guy, you know, working for 30 to 50 thousand a year maintaining those. And so a lot of small businesses kind of hit a cap there where – they really didn't want to grow past a certain point because their costs went up considerably. Your, your IT infrastructure is its a pain in the butt to maintain. After it's been around for a couple of years, things start to break, and you know the scalability just isn't there. So moving things to the cloud means, in the case of Amazon, if you need more processors for your virtual machine, you just throttle it up. Okay. I'm going to pay for two more processors, or I'm going to set up a payment plan where it automatically gives processors to whatever it needs to run, and then I just pay for how many it used. Uh, or in the case of something like Gmail, if, if you have a, like a, a Google team set up, um, you pay per user, small fee per user. And then, again, that's, it's kind of agnostic for scalability. It doesn't matter how many you have, you pay, you know, Five bucks, ten bucks a month per user, whatever it is, you just add them to your team. 
Somebody else handles the maintenance and upgrades on this stuff too. I touched on that as well. And again, that is that's a big piece. You are a small business owner, and odds are you're spending your time on stuff that isn't tech stuff. And that's a good thing. You don't want to spend your business time wasting it on technology stuff. You don't want to have to deal with maintenance, system issues, upgrades, patches. Every time one of those security warnings that I mentioned comes out, again, these things come out all the time, you don't want to have to figure out what's involved with making sure your systems aren't affected by it, making sure somebody doesn't break in and steal your data. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes along with your IT systems, and the cloud kind of eliminates some of that. Uh, You know, the cost is also typically lower than self-hosted systems. And again, getting rid of some of that stuff, the maintenance and upgrades, labor is giant. You can get rid of that. Um, Basically, you go to the cloud, you call support number if you have any issues. Otherwise, it just works. It costs less. You know, the, the other the other big thing, and this is something that's being promoted heavily, is you can access your systems from just about anywhere. And, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a big thing. Uh, it used to be, back in the day, for instance, back when I worked for AT&T Wireless, we would go on a business trip, we would take our laptops, and then we would have to hope and pray that we could find a dedicated phone line fast enough to help us connect to our local area network so we could get our email, because all of our email was behind a firewall. You may have had this happen, too. If you ever worked in corporate America, or if you still work in a large corporate office, your choices are either being on their local area network, or if you're lucky, they have webmail. And the webmail probably is not the easiest to use. The cloud gets rid of that. If you have a cloud-based email service, you can access your email just as easily from any place. So that, that's, that's a big thing. And again, hybrid web apps work from anywhere as well, and it's, it's seamless. Uh, speaking of seamless, another big thing is integration between systems is easier and more standardized in the cloud. Now, this is something, as a real estate agent or broker, as a small business owner, you don't have to deal with too much. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking about stuff like if you have a feed from your MLS, maybe they give you like a, a URL. You paste that into a box in a website, and all of a sudden it picks up your, you know, your like an RSS feed for listings or something like that. Some of these things you still have to monkey with a little bit, but a lot of the integration between these systems, because it's handled by the cloud providers, you don't have to deal with it. Good example of that is Facebook. If you want Facebook to post stuff to Twitter or vice versa, Facebook to post stuff to other applications, we use Hootsuite to automatically update our Facebook for for some items. Uh, You just go in and say, okay, connect to Facebook, automatically post, done. Well, that's that's integration, and that's the kind of thing that used to take a lot of time and effort. Now, another advantage of the cloud is backups are instantaneous, automated, and you don't have to deal with them. And again, that's big. Uh, There's a trust factor there. It's kind of like e-commerce. That's something where, like, personally, I keep backups of my stuff. I have backups in the cloud, too, but I also have a backup hard drive. And I would recommend that that every single one of you do the same. Uh, let Let me go off on a tangent there for just a sec. But before I do, let's take a quick commercial break. Is coaching right for you, and how can I guarantee it will work for me? Chances are you are asking yourself those questions right now. I'll answer those critical questions for you in just a moment. But first, let's be honest about something you may have always suspected. You've probably always known that the nation's top 1% of realtors, you know, those millionaire agents you see on TV, they possess a secret knowledge that the other 99% of agents do not have. Where did they learn what they know? And more importantly, how did they learn how to put this closely guarded information into money-making action? It's simple. They have a coach. Not just any coach. The nation's mega millions, top 1% of the realtors 
know that in order to maintain their almost unfair advantage, that they must have their own personal coach, a proven market-tested coach who has truly walked in their shoes, a coach who has worked with many of the nation's leading agents. At this point, you're probably ready to maybe try coaching. However, you don't want to be unfairly locked into a long-term ball and chain that coaching contracts can give you. It just makes sense that you should be able to try it before you buy it. Even more importantly, you want to have a coach who is the best of the best not someone who is simply assigned to you, or even worse, has never sold real estate. Can you imagine? If this is you, I have something for you right now that is exactly what you have been looking for. For the next 48 hours, Tim and Julie Harris Real Estate Coaching is offering you a free coaching call. This is a real coaching call with a real Tim and Julie Harris coach. Now, while you are thinking about it, why don't you visit us online? at freecoachingcallsforagents.com to get started. Once again, that is freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Now, let's be clear. This exclusive coaching opportunity is only available for the first 50 realtors who are stone-cold serious about their real estate business and know that in order to succeed at the highest level, they must hire a coach. So don't wait any longer. Take action now and visit us again at freecoachingcallsforagents.com to schedule your free coaching call. Again, that's freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Thanks so much. See you all soon. Okay, sorry about that. We are back. This is Tim Ventura. Filling in for Tim and Julie Harris. It's a live show. Our call in number is 347 857 1195. Or write to me at questions at realestatecoachingradio.com. Sorry about that. We were having some technical issues there. Again, this is a live show. It's 347 857 1195. It's Casual Friday. We're talking about technology. So, backups. I'm going to take a brief diversion here on this. People have asked me, how do you store your, how do you back up your data so that it's safe, so that it's secure? Uh, I've worked in a lot of different corporate environments. They all do it a little bit differently. Uh, some of them are, are really kind of anal retentive about it. Some of them actually put it on, on tapes. Back in the day, they had it on tapes. Uh, before that, they had it on reel to reel, and they would send it in a metal box to an off-site storage facility. Now, for your business, you do not have to do that. But what you do need to do is keep your important data safe. Now, one system that people use for this is Carbonite, and that's a cloud-based system. We're talking about the cloud today. You install Carbonite, it automatically backs your stuff up over the network, and uh, basically periodically it will update it as you change your files. Now there's some advantages and disadvantages to this. If you're doing a lot of file intensive stuff, that means your computer is always, always moving stuff over the network. That's a lot of bandwidth. And and you know, it's a, it ties your machine up a fair amount. So Carbonite is good and it's possible, I don't use it personally, it's possible that you could uh, schedule it to only do that at night maybe. Um, so you've got some, some possible advantages there. But again, there, there's kind of a downside. It's very network intensive. Uh, another thing that you can do, and, and this is my personal choice, is to have a backup hard drive. If you're a small business owner, you can get away with just one, or you can use a network hard drive where you plug it into your local area network, you put all of your stuff on that drive, and in my case, unplug it and turn it off when you're done. That way it can't be hacked. That, that's the best way to approach things. Uh, if you have a network hard drive, it will automatically power down when it's not in use, which is, which is close to being as secure. So um, anyhow, that is backups. Now, let's talk for a minute about some other cloud stuff. I have some more points written down here. So some of the key benefits of it. 
uh, you can use a web browser to access just about everything. I think we've gone over that. Fewer viruses and malware, fewer junkware plugins, fewer software bugs. This is an area this is an area where I have so much experience, it's insane. We when we were doing BPO automation and we were doing technical work for customers, what we found is real estate agents have so much junk on their PCs. And it's not your fault. You get emails from friends, you get emails from colleagues, coworkers, maybe it's got an attachment, maybe it says install this app, it's free. You click a button, it's on your machine and it hides there forever. And a lot of them install other junk as well. Now, if you have a modern version of Internet Explorer, and I believe Firefox does the same thing, you can manage add-ons. In fact, I'll take a quick diversion at my PC here. Let's go into Internet Explorer and check. You go to your menu bar, Tools, Manage Add-ons. And in mine, I have everything disabled except Shockwave Flash. Everything else is disabled in mine. And default because off Microsoft Office installed, it's got 10 different add-ons. Well, that slows down your browser a lot. And if you have, you know, again, a lot of real estate agents will have two or three toolbars. If you have toolbars installed and all that, this can make your computer incredibly slow. Every time you do anything, it takes five times as long. So, Again, if you go into Tools, Manage Add-ons, you can turn some of this stuff off. And when you're working on the cloud, one of the things that you want is you want the most real estate possible – pardon the pun – the most real estate possible in your web browser. You don't want the toolbars. You don't want the junk. You don't want the quick access buttons. You want to be able to see as much web page as you can, and you want that browser to run as fast as possible. So going into Manage Add-ons is one way to do that. So cloud stuff in general has fewer of these issues. Every now and then you'll see a website that says, well, install me. I'll make things run faster. The Google toolbar might be one example. If you have Gmail, well, you don't have to be in Gmail to get messages with the Google toolbar, right? I don't use it, so I don't know. But it's one of those many, many little feature add-ons that they say that you can use. But in general, the, the idea is being on the cloud means less of that junk. Um, so, you know, th that's, those are some of the big things. Cloud applications are, are also oftentimes more specialized, less confusing, easier to use. Uh, they're, they're more focused. You know, the, the, the website that you go to to use the application, this is especially true for a lot of real estate stuff. If you go to your MLS, everything in that is focused in that MLS website is focused on the MLS. And that's unlike Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word, has, you know, one of the reasons they went to the ribbon is because it has a ton of toolbars and buttons and junk like that. So, so things are more specialized. Coming back here to my list, the same cloud apps can be accessed from your PC, tablet, and smartphone. You won't have to upgrade hardware as often. That's, that's a note that I wrote down. I think that's pretty important. Uh, again, as a small business owner, you don't want to have to spend money on things that you're going to, you know, that you, you don't have to. And I think one of the big challenges is in the traditional model of software, like every time a new version of Office comes out, it's bigger and more bloated. Every time a new version of Windows comes out, it's bigger and more bloated. You have to upgrade your PC. Then you give it a couple of years, you do the whole same thing over again. Cloud software means... You're not as reliant on that cycle of hardware and then software upgrades. And I think that's a big thing. So it means that you can get away with spending less money. And in today's world, that's, I think, more important than ever because computers aren't getting much faster. We're reaching the limits, at least for the time being, the limits of Moore's Law in traditional chip architectures. Moore's Law, again, has to do with how fast computer chips can run and we're, we're hitting some fundamental limits there, which means computers aren't getting that much faster. So why spend the money on it? Why have to deal with it? Cloud apps mean you don't have to upgrade as often. Hybrid cloud apps, we talked about that earlier, like Office 365, 
that's again this is another area I use office 360 365 I, I don't even know I just know that I have it installed I can use it on the web I can check my email from anywhere I've got it turned on with my iPhone so the same email that I use on Microsoft Outlook on my desktop I can check from the web or my iPhone and when I send a message or I delete a message or I save a draft or any of the stuff that goes on with email it updates all three at the same time those are hybrid apps it is a desktop app but it acts like a cloud app and there's a, there's a major benefit there you can also do that with a Macintosh so Windows or Mac you can use Office 365 and if you're on Google Docs obviously that's I believe they have a hybrid component as well you can do the same thing since these cloud apps allow universal web access it's easier to collaborate with other people as well not just people using the same system as you but what I mean is as a real estate agent you're going to be interacting with people all day long and you're used to that with email it doesn't matter if they're on a PC or a Mac they can read your email well why shouldn't you be able to share files just as easily Facebook is the same thing, right? You don't know what kind of a PC or Mac or Linux or whatever somebody's on if they're using Facebook. You just know they're on Facebook. So clouds, they, they, cloud apps provide this more this more universal framework for that. Now let's get to uh, let's get to some stuff that's that's more important to real estate agents. Okay. So we've touched on a lot of these points before. It gives you as the agent more choice in your operating system you're not as tied to a Mac or PC as you used to be that is giant that is giant that is so big one of the things that we had with BPO automation group one of the challenges that we saw there was people were tied to using a PC for example because they had this app or that app for their CRM or their corporate network or whatever and they really wanted to use a Mac but they were stuck with this PC and the MLS required Internet Explorer. So maybe they'd be on a Mac, but then they would have to run Windows Parallels and pay for the PC stuff and all that kind of fun stuff just because. Well, with cloud apps, you, you don't have those ties. You, you can access it from whatever you're computing with. Now, what, what this means is, since whatever you're computing with is going to be using a web browser to access it, your web browser is becoming more important than ever. More important than ever. Let me stress that. Keep it up to date. Remove those old junk toolbars and add-ons. And again, in Internet Explorer, you go to Menu, Tools, Manage Add-ons, and you can disable. I have, I have tons of those disabled. I have no add-ons enabled except for Shockwave. Tools, Manage Add-ons. You want to make that web browser as big and fast as possible. You also want to, uh, if you have Windows Update, you can run Windows Update, get the latest version of all this stuff. Make sure your PC is up to date. Uh, if you're on a Mac, you've got some similar things there. You've got a, a menu bar here. You can go to Tools and Add-ons in Firefox and manage those there, although usually you don't have as many as in Internet Explorer. And if you're on a Mac in Safari, I believe they have an equivalent. Uh, now, one of the things that's also very, very, very important is cloud apps use bandwidth. Bandwidth is, is becoming the new processor speed. So get the fastest connection you can. Now, one way to use this, and I'm going to test this on air here just to make sure I wrote down the URL right, is speedtest.com. And I'm going to go there and take a peek really quick. And... Uh, let me see. You can use speedtest.com, although speedtest.net, speedtest.net, the UCLA speed test, www.speedtest.net. That requires Flash. You go to the little triangle on the screen. Now, in my case, I select the Bellingham Washington test, and then you click Begin Test. You select basically the closest major city, and it will test how fast your machine is. You really want to have over three to six megabits per second. Three to six megabits per second in bandwidth. Now, three megabits per second is kind of the, the, the old default cable modem standard. So I got my first cable modem, I think, in 1997, 
and it was doing three megabits, if I remember right. That that's a good standard for it. Um, six megabits or faster, I believe six megabits is if, if you have like wireless, uh, like fixed wireless. Some companies do that. We have a local fixed wireless company that does that, and that's not super expensive. Uh, you're not paying a ton of money for these. Cable modem, depending on your provider, is maybe a little bit more than some other solutions, but you certainly don't want to be on dial-up. And personally, I would not recommend DSL. I, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, DSL is, at best, probably half as fast as the slowest cable modem speed. So these days, I, I would say you want probably three to six megabits or faster. Uh, how fast is fast? Well, on a cable modem, Comcast here, they offer, I believe, 55 megabits as a guaranteed speed. Uh, if you are down in uh, the California area or, or in Phoenix where we used to live, Cox, Cox Internet, I believe they're guaranteeing 45 or 50 megabits per second. That is fast. So all of a sudden, stuff like you know, Dropbox, those big downloads, that, that stuff becomes a lot easier. So bandwidth is going to become the new CPU. It is very important for cloud apps because each web app that you use, each piece of that app is loading pieces from all over the Internet, and it's all using bandwidth. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes than you probably realize. Okay, so another part of cloud apps is everything in the cloud is billed as a service. No one-time purchases. So keep track of those monthly bills. They add up fast. I actually wrote that in the note. Uh, let, let, me, let me touch on that for just a sec. So this goes back to the, the big buzzword before the cloud, which was software as a service. Uh, again, one of the major advantages to this is from a software company's perspective, it makes support a lot easier. When you have a service and you've got these cloud apps, all of a sudden you don't have to deal with, we're selling version 3, we need more revenue, let's release version 4, and then we have to support it. That's, that's the big problem. So from a software provider's perspective, it lets them, like, like the BPO Automation Group or any other software provider, for them to provide you software as a service, especially to do it as a cloud app, it makes it a lot cheaper for them and a lot easier for them to provide a good user experience good software as opposed to here's the latest version because we need more money, but guess what? We're not going to be able to support it well because we've already got five past versions. See, and again, for, for you know 20 years before that, people were doing that. Companies were doing that, right? Microsoft Office version 2, 3, 6, whatever. Well, the reason they did that was, was money. You know, It's not just features. It's because after a while, they've saturated the market for whatever that software is, and they have to release a new version, whether or not people want it, which led to software bloat, which led to all sorts of issues and support problems. So if you do it as a service, everybody has the new version, the same version, the, the, the version that works for that service, and they pay monthly. The downside of this, I mentioned it already, is keep track of those monthly bills. Uh, as a small business owner, it's easy to sign up for things willy-nilly. You know, it just is. I mean, uh, you know, with uh, with Tim and Julie Harris, we have lots of components to the architecture that we have in place. We get lots of these monthly bills, and you know, one of the things that we have to do is go through them periodically and say, okay, is this something that we need? Is is this a value add, or is this just something that we, you know, signed up for? And you know, especially in social networking stuff, you get into social networking tools. They promise you the moon and the stars. Yeah, maybe you're paying ten bucks, fifteen bucks a month, and you have to look at that and say, well, am I using this? Am I really using this? You know, I would bet, I would bet that you could save a considerable amount of money just by uh, just by going through some of those technology bills that that you're probably paying automatically and, you know, finding a different place to put those. So let's take another quick commercial break, and then we will come back for the remainder of the show. Is coaching right for you? And how can I guarantee it will work for me? Chances are you are asking yourself those questions right now. I'll answer those critical questions for you in just a moment. 
But first, let's be honest about something you may have always suspected. You've probably always known that the nation's top 1% of realtors, you know, those millionaire agents you see on TV, they possess a secret knowledge that the other 99% of agents do not have. Where did they learn what they know? And more importantly, how did they learn how to put this closely guarded information into money-making action? It's simple. They have a coach. Not just any coach. The nation's mega millions, top 1% of the realtors know that in order to maintain their almost unfair advantage, that they must have their own personal coach. A proven, market-tested coach who has truly walked in their shoes. A coach who has worked with many of the nation's leading agents. At this point, you're probably ready to maybe try coaching. However, you don't want to be unfairly locked into a long-term ball and chain that coaching contracts can give you. It just makes sense that you should be able to try it before you buy it. Even more importantly, you want to have a coach who is the best of the best, not someone who is simply assigned to you or, even worse, has never sold real estate. Can you imagine? If this is you, I have something for you right now that is exactly what you have been looking for. For the next 48 hours, Tim and Julie Harris Real Estate Coaching is offering you a free coaching call. This is a real coaching call with a real Tim and Julie Harris coach. Now, while you are thinking about it, why don't you visit us online at freecoachingcallsforagents.com to get started. Once again, that is freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Now, let's be clear. This exclusive coaching opportunity is only available for the first 50 realtors who are stone-cold serious about their real estate business and know that in order to succeed at the highest level, they must hire a coach. So don't wait any longer. Take action now and visit us again at freecoachingcallsforagents.com to schedule your free coaching call. Again, that's freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Thanks so much. See you all soon. Okay, we are back. This is Tim Ventura filling in for Tim and Julie Harris. This is Casual Friday. It's a live show, and we're talking about tech. Our call-in number here is 347-857-1195, or write me at questions at realestatecoachingradio.com. Again, that's 347-857-1195. If you want to schedule a free coaching call with me, I'm on the roster, hiding at the bottom of the page, Go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com, like the commercial just said. So let's do a little bit more wrap-up here. We're talking about the cloud. We're talking about how it makes your life so much easier. Well, it makes everybody's life a little easier. I think that's probably the, the relevant point. Um, one of the biggest things about the cloud for agents, you are mobile people, my friends, or should I say we're all mobile people. Uh, whether or not you're selling real estate, the world is becoming more mobile. It's just data. You know, it's a bigger part of our lives. And so if you're on the road, if you're uh, traveling around meeting with customers, you do not want to have to lug your laptop for every little thing. You don't want to have to take it every single place you go, set it up, do this, do that, do the other thing. I, I think that's one of the big push for, for Macintosh is a lot of people like the Mac tablets. They're They're lighter. Uh, they're easier to manage. You don't have to deal with them as much. But truth be told, people are going to tablets. And excuse me, that is supposed to be the way the industry is going in general. They're saying that a dichotomy is going to happen where users use tablets and power users or developers use laptops or desktops, depending. Uh, agents would fit more into the user category unless <laughs> unless you're doing graphic design, which probably not. So uh, tablets are probably the future for most most agents, and that's a good thing. They're easier to uh, easier to manage. They start faster. You don't have to deal with the viruses and the spyware, all that kind of fun stuff. Another advantage is you can use. There, there are two different ways to do this. Obviously, there's the 3G tablet. Uh, which is which is a really good deal, except that the data cost can be a little bit higher. Or you can use your phone as a hotspot for your tablet if you you know if you have a Wi-Fi tablet, and uh, 
I believe you can do that with Android or uh, iPhone systems or, or even Mix systems. So, um, so the, the idea is, if you have a tablet, if you have your phone, you know, one or the other or both, um, you can use these things for cloud apps instead of having to take your laptop. And if you're on cloud apps, all of a sudden, you can do most, if not all, of the same stuff that you would normally do, stuff that would have been on your laptop, where you take it out, you power it up, you start the app. Meanwhile, you're stalling the customer. Hang on a second. Let me chat you up while I try and do this, that, or the other thing. Now, all of a sudden, it's instant on. You can do it with your tablet, right? Obviously, tablet's a lot easier than the phone, so you don't have to deal with those tiny little keypads. Uh now, since you're doing this in your mobile, uh, you can use these cloud apps to get your data anywhere. And again, that's that's giant. That's giant. It's not just email anymore. If you're using Office 365 or Google Docs, you can get your spreadsheets. You can get your your forms if you have a if you have folks fill out forms. Um, your calendar stuff. All of the stuff that used to live on your PC now lives in the cloud. And that, that's one of the big pushes for uh, for Office 365. They're trying to compete with Google. They want you to be able to save to the cloud just as easily as if you were saving to your hard drive. In fact, uh, w- with the new version of Office, that's that's what it does. It's the cloud first, if I remember correctly, and then your desktop is kind of a distant second. And, and it's interesting because, you know, in the old days, we would use something called FTP for this, file transfer. When you're building a website, you still FTP things, you know. And now the new quote-unquote save feature in Microsoft Office, you hit save. Well, if you save it to the cloud, you're basically doing FTP. You just do it to their server. So that, that cloud, is it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And from an agent's perspective, that's a giant benefit for you. But that that also puts a burden on you. You have a burden there to make sure that you have lots of bandwidth as much as possible wherever you can find it. So let me let me give you some takeaway points before we close things up here. Everything is going to the cloud. That's a trend that probably won't change. It makes life easier and it saves money for companies that develop software. So that's why the trend probably won't change. It is easier to manage monthly billing for subscribers than it is to come out with a new release and then support the old one simultaneously. That's that's just how it is. If you have a new feature, you want everybody who requested it to be able to have it instead of having people in the old system complain, well, I don't want to have to spend 200 bucks for the new feature. Well, you don't have to. You you pay your monthly fee, you get the new features right when they come out. And it means you don't have to support the old software that doesn't have those features, you know. The cloud, it's going to give you more flexibility and freedom to access your data from everywhere. And and that's big. That's big. You're also going to have more freedom to use Macs, tablets, and other hardware. Now, I I don't hate Windows. I use Windows. In fact, I'm on Windows 8.1 Update 1, which is the newest, latest, and greatest, and probably most hated version of Windows of all time. But the truth of the matter is, a lot of agents, if not most agents, feel burned by Windows, and they, they probably should. If you're not a highly tech-savvy person, it's very easy to get in over your head with viruses, with malware, with the junk toolbars we talked about, with broken Wi-Fi or whatever, whatever. you know, Lots of little settings that you don't understand and you shouldn't have to. Well, the cloud is going to give you more freedom to use the software that you know and love on a Mac, on a tablet, on Linux, even on your phone if you're if you're feeling ambitious or you're in a pinch. So that's the big trend. The trend that you're going to have to worry about less is your hardware. Over time, over time that hardware should start to fade into obscurity. Again, if you have if you have Safari, you have Firefox or you have Internet Explorer, it doesn't really matter which, then you can access those cloud apps. So so it's going to be more about your connection. It's going to be about Am I connected instead of does do I have this software? And I, I think one of the other takeaway points is if you have been limping along on a slow connection, it's probably time to upgrade. Uh, again, that URL was speedtest.net, S-P-E-E-D-T-E-S-T, speedtest.net. 
you can use that. Just pick the local major service provider, you know, your, whatever your local hub is there, and uh, test your speed. I would say if you have three to six megabits per second, that's that's pretty reasonable. If you're on DSL, that's 512 to 768 kilobits per second. That's under one meg per second. And these days, that's that's kind of on the slow side of things. Uh, DSL was fine probably seven or eight years ago, but I, I would say these days with bandwidth intensive stuff, it might be time to upgrade. Um, you can find some pretty reasonable packages out there at higher speeds. Uh, so, you know, it might be time to kind of search around. Those are the big parts. That's what the cloud means. It, it is hardware agnostic. So, again, this is Tim Ventura. This has been kind of a casual Friday. Uh, please forgive my puppy dogs for making noise. Uh, if you like this, we can make it kind of a regular Friday show. We've been talking about technology. And uh, if you want to talk to me directly, I'm hiding at the very bottom of the page at freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time... Thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.